I'm joined from Berlin by the chief economist at Berenberg Bank, Holger Schmieding, and here in the studio by Thomas Wieledek. He's the senior international economist at Barclays. Well, Thomas, let me start with you. The euro fell against both the dollar and sterling today on uh, foreign exchanges, ostensibly because of Mrs Merkel's lacklustre performance. Is this necessarily bad news for the eurozone? Well, I guess it depends. I guess the key issue here is that if you look at the possible Jamaica coalition people are talking now about, the FDP and the CDU have sort of ideologically similar views of how to deal with the euro area, while the Green Party has quite an opposing view. Um, and I think that perhaps that was reflected in market pricing today, that it's not clear to which extent some of the solutions that have been proposed like by President Macron will actually be feasible now. OK, well, Holger, let me bring you in at this point. Germany has never had a so-called Jamaica coalition between the CEDU, the FDP and the Greens at national level. Jamaica, of course, because those are the colours of the different parties, black, yellow and green. But how easy is it going to be for Angela Merkel to put such a coalition together? It is not going to be easy. This is a difficult combination. However, having said that, this is exactly the kind of things that Merkel is very good at. She has a lot of experience of bringing difficult people, including some difficult males, together to get an agreement. And with her, appearance, with her experience, she will very likely get this Jamaica coalition together and it will probably work for the full four-year term. Well, let me remind you both what the Brexit secretary, David Davis, said last year. He said, we are too valuable a market for Europe to shut off. Within minutes of a vote for Brexit, the CEOs of Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen and Audi will be knocking down Chancellor Merkel's door, demanding that there be no barriers to German access to the British market. Well, what do you think of that, Thomas? I mean, it doesn't sound on the face of it as though Mrs Merkel is going to be jumping in on this. Well, I think that um, the government will pursue a policy of continuity of the previous Brexit strategy. And I think the challenges to the European Union very broadly, also if you look at Hungary and Poland, perhaps, the, which, you know, there's some, anti, perhaps some people would say anti-European sentiment there recently, will sort of lead Germany to try and continue and unite Europe behind one negotiation stance with, with respect to the UK. So therefore, I think it's unlikely that you'll see major changes after this election. Oh, good. Do you go along with that? I mean, is, is it fairly unlikely that Mrs Merkel is going to jump in and uh, try and get involved to give German car manufacturers a, a better di chance of a tariff-free access to the UK market? This is a very interesting point. This issue, namely that German industry would like tariff-free access to the UK, is discussed a lot in the UK. It's rarely ever discussed this side of the channel. This Brexit issue from the continental European perspective is a major political challenge. It is not an issue where narrow economic interests will play any significant role in shaping the German and European negotiating position. The, the priority of the EU27 is to keep the EU27 together to strengthen the coherence of the Eurozone and the EU27, um, access to the comparatively small UK market, if you see it from the big European continent, is not a key concern anywhere over here. So, Holger, uh, 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 Theresa May and David Davis are really wasting their time by trying to appeal over the heads of Michel Barnier to the, the heads of government of the EU27? Yes, absolutely. The EU27 are comparatively united on that. And trying to appeal to individual heads of government will only result in a further waste of time. Because, once again, this is an issue, Brexit, where the EU27, whatever their other difficulties and differences are, are comparatively united. They all want Britain to pay uh, their legal dues. Right. Thomas, what about uh, the Eurozone and chances of reforms to the Eurozone? I mean, Macron is making a big speech tomorrow in this subject. The assumption was that Merkel would give him the sort of backing to do so. But if she's going to be tied up now cobbling together a coalition, this doesn't really bode well for him, particularly because the FPD doesn't really support closer European integration, does it? Well, I would say, you know, one, one important thing to be said is that all parties support European integration, just in different sort of points of view, and they have different points of view, and there's different ways of European integration. And the timing of President Macron's speech tomorrow is actually very important because one could say initially the plan was to actually get some of these ideas into the next coalition agreement. So everyone is going to be watching very closely what he's going to say tomorrow, 
But I think that the Jamaica constellation will likely make it much more difficult to make significant progress on things like the Euro Area Finance Minister over the next four years. All right, Holger, last word to you in Berlin. If Mrs Merkel has to put together this coalition, she's going to have to offer government positions to the Greens and the FDP. What about Wolfgang Schäuble, the uh, finance minister's position? Is, is he in, in danger of having his job bartered away to one of the other parties? Yes, that is indeed a significant probability as it's now three parties who all want senior jobs in government. Having said that, for the possibility, it's not certain for the possibility that Schäuble moves on from the finance ministry to some other job, then the finance ministry would probably be taken over by the Liberals, the FDP, and in their attitudes towards European integration, they are very, very similar to Schäuble. In other words, not much would change in the actual German policy approach towards Europe, which is constructive but prudent. All right, Holger Schmieding in Berlin and uh, Thomas Wiedelek here in London. Thanks for joining me both.